Live from Stanford University, it's theCUBE, covering the Women in Data Science Conference 2017. Hi, welcome to theCUBE, I'm Lisa Martin, and today we are at Stanford University at the second annual Women in Data Science Conference. This is a phenomenal event. This is our second time here. John Furrier uh, is my co-host. John, tell us about theCUBE's involvement and your involvement in the Women in Data Science. Lisa, great, uh, great to see you. We're excited to be here. We got the live broadcast. Certainly it's an exciting event. Women in Data Science, this is the second event. The inaugural event was last year or just, just almost 13 months ago, uh, Judy Logan and uh, Karen were running this. And it was really about getting women who were super geeks, I call them, who were really doing like programming and hardcore data science work um, together. Uh, and, and it's now grown into a worldwide phenomenon as we've been seeing in the, in, the, in the world these days. The women are uniting and what's exciting is around, it's around something cool like tech, right? So like, not just you're seeing on the political side the, the movements going on, but the women in data science really is what I call the, the tech athlete, the inner geeks who are, who are smart and doing great stuff, and this event has grown from baselining here at Stanford University to all around the world, so you know, folks are gathering 400 at a time and hundreds of thousands of people all around the world are gathering to peer up. And uh, it's been a great event. We've been involved since the beginning of the event with theCUBE, and again, it's part of our passion with uh, women in tech uh, and women in data science and the Grace Hopper and all the right. variety of events, as you know, we, Absolutely. we do. And, and you know, surfacing new voices is really our core mission, and I think this is a kind of event that shows that uh, these communities are surfacing up new voices to the world, not the same old, you know, trottened out people who are, who are the, right. saying the same things over and over again. There's now this community involvement where real smart people are coming together because they're all connected. So there's a positive element around uh, being connected. So I love it. Right, it's really at an inflection point. You mentioned attendees last year, a little over a year ago was the first annual with about 400 attendees and they live stream this. We're, this is being live streamed um, to over 75 locations across the country. In fact, this event's been sold out for weeks. One of the things that's really interesting, John, is in the second year, Diane Green, the SVP of Google Cloud, is the morning keynote. Uh, you were in her keynote. Talk to us about yeah. um, Diane Green, Google Cloud, and, and really some of the interesting yeah. advice that she has given the audience this morning. Yeah, it's super exciting to be, you know, also as reporting on the event, Diane Green was the one of the marquee keynotes. And obviously she uh, is on the board of directors of Alphabet, which is the Google uh, now mega company. And she's been on for multiple years as a board member, but she's also a Silicon Valley legend. I mean, in my mind, she's up there uh, with some of the big names like Steve Jobs and the Andy Grove kind of names because she's been a geek all of her life. And she told her story about when she was on a beach literally in Hawaii doing windsurfing and power sailing and how she's always had an attraction to engineering, had a degree at MIT and then went to Cal for her master's degree in computer science. But she took us through her journey to the founding of VMware and how she had a, her first child and second child during those 10 year startup run there. Wow. And it was exciting, but the, like, the key message was that, you know, look at, there's so much opportunity around data science. And she said, I thought was some very interesting quotes was, one was that machine learning um, is going to take away jobs. And that's a fact, there's no debate about it. She said that directly as a matter of fact, that was her direct quote. And then she said, but society has to figure out how we replace those jobs and provide a path. The other thing that she said was, machine learning is the new revolution. And with all the hype around artificial intelligence or AI and self-driving cars, it's really the cloud computing paradigm and AI and machine learning at the center of it as the revolution. So cloud was revolution one and revolution two going on now in the tech business that's impacting all these wonderful women in tech and others is machine learning. So in the data science field, machine learning is becoming the kernel of the center of this revolution because there's unlimited potential compute power available, the software being written around data sets are available, and the data sets themselves are now available. So, you know, Google Cloud's doing things for companies and their, and their, their customers, like Spotify, for instance, doing things that used to be in the database world take 14 hours, now in 16 seconds. So, that was a huge thing. The other thing about Diane Green's keynote that I thought was fascinating was that she's a data geek at heart. And a lot of folks might not know this, but she was an angel investor in Cloudera. And Cloudera is where theCUBE was founded. That was our first office sharing with them when they had like 17 employees. They became the pioneer for big data and Hadoop. She was an early investor there. Her husband, um, uh, as a professor at Stanford, she's in the roots. But Diane Green really uh, is one of those executives that doesn't get a lot of press because she's not actually looking for it, right? She's just super humble 
and big fan of hers. And, and again, I think she's you know, one of the big tech stories that really hasn't been written yet. So you know, we're looking forward to following up with her and you know, telling the Google Cloud story with Diane Green. Absolutely, she gave some interesting adv career advice. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, so, we, so the question always comes up, and one question here was, what do you, advice do you give for someone who's in data science? And she kind of took a step back, and she's got these mannerisms you can, and that's like, she didn't, I think she wanted to say something else, but I think she kind of paused, because it's really, it's a hard answer. Mm -hmm. Where do you start? Because it kind of depends. Data science really comes down to, you know, where your passion is. But she said this, she said, um, if you go deep on something, and she used her past as an engineering degree, go deep on something. Because if you can go deep on something and prove that you can do something rigorous, whether it's engineering, a physics, or a degree, once you go deep, then you can then look at some horizontal opportunities and you can probably work on any project. So her advice was, try to go deep and be rigorous and disciplined in something that you can become an expert in. But that can translate to other projects. So that was one. The other one was, don't be afraid to take a risk because she was talking about her personal experiences where she's always worried about getting fired. Um, and and that she said, don't worry about the little things like that because if you're in the data science field, if you get fired, you can get hired right away. So she's kind of giving like a pep talk. I thought that was very good advice. That's fantastic advice because you, you don't hear that. Yeah. John and I were talking off camera. It's it, from the, the generations that we grew up in, obviously very different than the generation, the younger generation today, but that was not advice that you and I were probably ever given. It was, yeah. you get a job and you do that and, until you retire. So hearing somebody yeah. as successful and a female as Diane Green saying, yeah. don't be afraid to get fired is phenomenal advice, but it comes from experience. Yeah. You talk about, uh, as she did, um, the, demand, the demand for data scientists is huge. In fact, there's predicted mm -hmm. to be a shortage of talent in the next year. How how do you see events like Women in Data Science helping to combat that and really inspire the next generation? You know, I was just talking with Dave Vellante yesterday about this and our team's working on this thing called the Cube 365, which is trying to take the magic of going and taking the live broadcast like we are now and sharing information to making it a digital product. And th th this is important because the trend that's going on in, in this event here that we see as a success formula is that there's a you know, an origination of an event like at Stanford or wherever, and they create a community aspect to it. And what's going on is that this seems to be the new e-learning environment. So right now you have two ways to learn, right? You have the old way, which is, you know, going to school, going to classes, or maybe going to online, you know, some email blasts that you get and you kind of respond to it. And then the old, and then the other new way is, the old way that's new old is, e-learning catalogs. You sign up for a course, you go to Coursera, Coursera or one of these sites, and you sit down there and you go through some linear catalog and you say, I pass 101, I go to 102. So the e-learning environments are not necessarily optimized for what we see as the key learning dynamic, which is social interaction. So there's a new dynamic developing and that's where machine learning and AI are seeming to augment that is that it's not about school online. It's about people who are smart together having hallway-like conversations where the acceleration of learning is done with peer groups and peer interaction. So what we're seeing on Twitter and Facebook and some of these new environments where as content gets shared, like we're doing here on theCUBE, that fosters a discovery and a progression to learn, to some proficiency. And that's developing as a whole new category of learning. Not, I got a degree online or I went to a class. Right. Maybe might be the combination of all three, but it's it's a progression to to proficiency. And this is a new dynamic. That's one of the things I'm particularly interested in about in talking to some of our guests, whether they're you know leaders in retail or um, or e-commerce or educators. Is d the data science traditional mm -hmm. skills? You know, do you have to be a hacker? Are you a hybrid hacker, math statistician? Mm -hmm. But now what's emerging, and you just kind of touched on this, is, yeah. the, is the social skill impact. You ha being good at being able to analyze data sets is yeah. great, but you have to be able to communicate that. And, and apply this, them. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and this is a great, you said the word, network of yeah. very inspiring women, yeah. and men as well, who are helping to really transform those hard skills yeah. as this revolution is evolving, the yeah. social If you think about components. the learning, at least this is an interesting conversation because you think learning is that, you think about learning and if you look at what works, and, and there's a couple of different things. When you think about agile software development or being agile, agile is also in part of the learning. So if you look at kids, my, my kids, and that's how you know, <laughs> some of you learn the most things about tech. They get on YouTube, they learn a video and they apply it. They don't go to school to learn how to do something. So there's a lot of what I call, um, you know, 
conversion rich content that's either available online like YouTube or somewhere else or here on theCUBE or here at Stanford that's being shared around in the communities that people can start on and then they apply it. So the key about this new community dynamic is when you have group interaction, it's iterating and you, there's practical ways to take something initially share it with a friend or collaborate quickly and master a skill much faster than the old ways of going to a classroom right. or going to a catalog where I learned it, then you look to apply it. Here you're learning and applying in real time. This to me is a new dynamic that no one has yet cracked the code on and I think this is where the machine learning, this uh, AI augmentation can really hit the, hit the sweet spot because you can combine social interaction with learning and the application of whatever that is, whether it's from play to, to uh, you know, something professional, is pretty amazing. And bringing up that is a great point. We have several people that are educators, that are professors that are going to mm -hmm. be on the show today. We'd love to understand what you just said uh, yeah. in terms of that real-time learning and the ability to, to get something, learn it quickly and apply it, how that's evolving education yeah. uh, of the next generation of computer scientists that are eventually going to be shaping well, Stanford our really pioneered. Stanford really pioneered the online. They had free online classes going back to years and they had unlimited, they broke all the records of free online classes on computer science. But the thing here that I'm looking at this event, I think it's interesting that we're in the middle of it happening in real time, is that it's a movement, right? And this idea that uh, digital women in data science here at Stanford, which is, uh, what, a couple hundred people in there, 400 people, mm -hmm. has offices all around the world where there's more hundreds of people there. You add it up, it's in the tens of thousands of women around the world, all connected around a live event right now. So the question is, what do they do next? How do you take that energy, that network that's been uh, flash mobbed, if you will, and how do you turn that into value for either more learning, career advancement, research, applying it to society? To me, that is the next thing that I think that you know, Judy Logan and her team will have to figure out and what we're going to try to help with is, how do you harness it? Mm -hmm. I mean, you put a Facebook group together, uh, LinkedIn group, there's really no answer, right? So the only answer is to figure out, keep them together and keep the content flowing, that's my opinion. And but I think that they're there because I think in the second annual and having somebody as powerful as Diane Green as a keynote is really an indicator. Yeah. There's tremendous momentum here, there's tremendous passion yeah. and the opportunity is, is limitless. So the next step is to your point, yeah. how do we figure out how to harness yeah. this and drive value globally? Yeah, and not be too corporate uh, shilling, like one thing about these events that's great, it's authentic, real. When you start to get in the big dogs like Diane Green in, it begs the question, where's Amazon Web Services? Where's Microsoft, Satya Nutella? So, you know, you, you start to ask the question and then does it become a PR thing for them or do they stay authentic? Right. So to me, I think if they stay on the authentic side, uh, it'll work, but again, Diane Green and what Google's doing is again, center of, and Google, Google is like a mini Stanford too, people don't know that, so like, uh, you know, having Google folks here really blends well with the Stanford culture and this culture here, so, yeah. What are some of the things that you're excited about, looking at your experience here the first year, what are some of the things that you've seen change, and, and what are you expecting to hear, or hoping to hear from some of the great speakers that are here today? What I like about this conference is it's not just the women's conference, this is a tech conference. And I think what last year got me really pumped about it was, they, it was nothing to do with gender really in my mind. It was all about machine learning and, and AI stuff. There was a backdrop of all women here, which is uh, phenomenal to see. But it really is conversations around tech, you know, and, and there was a kind of a, a, the, the impact of that content was there was a community fabric being developed. We, the hallway conversations last year were, hey, what are you working on? What project are you working on? Or what company do you work for? So there was a solidarity around the bonding of we're all women in data science, but it still was grounded in hardcore, you know, big data, hardcore cloud computing, hardcore AI and machine learning. And as Diane Green said, you know, machine learning is at the heart of this and it blooms out into every vertical. And she mentioned financial services to healthcare, but really, I mean, AI is going to be democratized. And I think you're going to see that be an opportunity for these movements to continue. So, you know, that gets me the most excited. And, and the other thing is that seeing an event that's so awesome grow and with a community fabric is, is key. Fantastic, well, looking forward to, yeah. uh, to that. And, and you talked about kind of the cross industry. Yeah. We've got a great lineup of guests that are going to be on the program today from retail to uh, leveraging uh, big data and data science as a change agent for the way that jobs are recruited to machine learning and healthcare to educators. So, so stick around. This is Lisa Martin with John Furrier yeah. on theCUBE from Women in Data Science. The second annual will be right back.